Welcome to the Body Smart Podcast. I'm Gemma. And I'm Jamie. And we've got another guest with us this week. What's your name? My name is Terry. And we're going to be talking about Christmas, how to navigate it, some top tips, not just on Christmas Day itself, but that whole big period leading up to it and how you can get ahead of your goals before New Year starts. So we've got an extra guest with us. We do. Hello, Terry Anderson. Hello, how are you doing? I'm all right. You look a bit nervous. You're a bit nervous. <laughs> I might not done this probably before. Did you ever get so, called like Mr. Anderson, like off the Matrix? I used to Mr. at Anderson. school. Everyone would. That's when the Matrix came out. That's how long ago <laughs> it was. It was like Mr. Anderson this, Mr. Anderson that. Yeah. Well, Mr. Anderson, would you like to introduce yourself properly? Yeah. So my name is Mr. Terry Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm one of the head coaches at Body Smart. Um, been with Body Smart for about a year now, mm-hmm. and uh, working full time. It's like a dream job, really, and before that, been in the health and industry, uh, health and fitness industry for about 12 or 13 years. Started out at university um, and did sport and exercise science and then went into personal training, freelance, and then into a studio, and the, uh, which I, I, I co-owned, and then into a gym, which I co-owned, kind of built that up, did nutrition uh, qualifications along the way and more PT type stuff. And then I realized that I didn't want to run a gym. <laughs> <laughs> Why yeah. not? Gym gym managing sucks. Um, it's just very, just very not what I wanted to do with my life. Very hands on as well. Yeah. yeah. Like, it wasn't even the managing of people. It was just, just managing a building. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just not, it wasn't what I kind of dreamt it would be. So got out of that. I went into just online coaching myself and was probably doing that for about a year or two. Um, actually, Stacy used to work at my gym. That's how Stacy knew me. So Stacy is oh. one of our coaches at Body yeah. Smart. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She she brought me to Body Smart. Um, reached out after I'd been online for about an, a year or two myself, and the rest is history. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're actually you're up in Liverpool because what's happening tomorrow? We've got the Body Smart Christmas Night Out. The Body Smart Christmas Night Out. So yes. this is perfect. Because it's that time of year when people are thinking about Christmas for our American listeners. It's the holidays. <laughs> and so we thought we'd chat about Christmas because is it fair to say this is a time of year where the rails come off for a lot of people? For most people. For most. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I would say for most people. Even you two? Um, a little bit sometimes. It depends. Depends. I mean, it wasn't last year, was it? I mean, <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, with COVID, well, which yeah, I think that was down. that was very different for a lot of people. But yeah, you know, usually I think there's there's just a lot more social events going on, a lot more meals, um, a lot more drinking. And I think in the UK, I don't know if it's like this in America, but some people literally like finish work on you know, the 18th of December and don't go back till the first Monday in January. So it's a long time without without any. Yeah, any structure, any routine. What do they call it? It's that last day, isn't it? It's Mad Mad Friday. That's what they call it. The Friday before Christmas, they call it Mad Friday because you're right, that's when a lot of people in the UK will finish work. Yeah. And it's it's crazy, isn't it, that evening? It's a good night. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good night. Describe it for our, our American listeners and Canadian listeners anywhere else around the world who doesn't know what it's like in the UK on Mad Friday. I mean... Drinking can get pretty mad in an so, so I think I think this is important because Sai brought this up a little bit earlier. Americans think mad is just being angry. As we say oh. mad we say oh. mad are like <laughs> you being crazy. Right. So, so that would be like aggressive Friday. Yeah. As a, as yeah, a yeah. translation. Oh, right. So no. it's like crazy, crazy Friday. Crazy Friday. Crazy Friday would yeah. But we call it mad. But Friday. we say mad, yeah. yeah. So there you go. <laughs> it, it's like when everyone puts their Christmas jumpers on, they like they roll out of work and then they probably don't stop until the early hours of the next day. They're drinking, eating, probably been partying at work uh, and, and just everyone. Like, it's just like a culture on that day. It's pretty much. Pretty it's much. like that as well for a lot of people. It's like the one day a year they go out <laughs> or night that they go yeah. out. You know what I mean? You hear like a lot of people are like, oh, they come out to shell that night and yeah. <laughs> went a bit crazy and got naked or something else. happened. you <laughs> know what I mean? the bottom on the, uh, <laughs> yeah. in the office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but do you not know think for some people that it like starts it then, doesn't it? It kind of mm-hmm. snowballs from that point on. Like you say, what will it work out to this year? What will it be? Ninth, then the week after will be like the 16th, won't it? The 16th of December will be Mad Friday. Yeah. 
yeah. and then it's like literally right through to the I think it's the Monday the third of January. So it's a long, it's a long time of, you know, that Friday happens. You get up the next day, you're hanging out your ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't have your your best day do you when that's happening, yeah. and then there's no routine or structure for the next two and a half weeks and people just eat and drink and eat and drink and eat and drink and a lot of weight gets piled on. And it does, like, depending on when, what year it is or where the day falls, like, I remember this one time, I, it was Mad Friday, happened to be like just before like Christmas Eve. So then it was like, you had Mad Friday and then everyone was like, oh, me and up for Christmas Eve. It's like, then it was Christmas day. Then it's like the bank holiday because it fell on the weekend mm. and it's like extending out, extending out and, you end up like having this like six day or even more like period where you then just get to the next weekend and it's doing it again because it's like New, New Year's. Year. <laughs> and and it's just this like blur of a of a ten yep. day period. Guess how many units of alcohol the average Brit consumes in that week period between Christmas Eve and New Year's Day. Now, to point out a unit of alcohol. Normal strength beer, like a pint of normal strength beer is two units. A high strength beer or cider would be three units for a pint. And like a 250 ml glass of wine, about three and a half units. Yeah. Guess how many we what, can What's see. like a Bailey's? Oh, I don't know. Should I have a look? <laughs> you, you have a guess like, at like, those units. units. I, rec I reckon a lot of people drink, start like morning drinking. It's yep. through that time. A whole bottle they? can go down Bailey's on like yeah. a Christmas day. Easily to yeah. yourself. It's yeah. a bit sickly, but you can't. It can be done, can't it? Like yeah. a fifty mil serving of Bailey's, which which is what you get in a bar. Mm. Who whoever pours a fifty mil oh serving God. themselves? If, 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 honestly, if you actually want to see how much you drink over Christmas, buy some measurers. I done this at the last party I had in our house, and um, people were pouring them in the measurers. I was like, "That's a double," and they were like, "Get like, get out of here!" They were like, "I normally put like four <laughs> times the amount yeah. in because you just go 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 go." And just pour but, it up. But or... I think that's why drinking at home can be so shocking and, <laughs> and a bit date. I, I, because I don't drink anymore. Mm. But I always say that the worst positions I put myself in were at house parties, usually with my kid running around in the background because those free pour measures are lethal. Yeah, yeah. It's not good. Well, going back to my question because you haven't answered because you, I know that you're trying to do the maths and maybe maths yeah. isn't your strong point. <laughs> 156 units apparently the average Brit will drink in that. Christmas Eve to New Year's Day period. That's like the average of like 13 pints of normal <laughs> strength beer a day. A day? That's but if you think, but, that it, is... but that's because if you think about it, like you were saying then, you know, Christmas morning, you might start off with champagne or a bit of or mimosas, you know, as our American yeah. friends mm. will call them. Mm -hmm. Then you might have a bit of Baileys and then you might have some eggnog and then you might have a bit of brandy. And a bit of and whiskey. There's wine, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's whiskey, yeah. there's beer. Those units add up. They yeah. really do. Yeah. Because it's not you're not just doing like one binge drinking session a night. It's morning to evening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That, that is, a, <laughs> I couldn't even imagine drinking 13 pints a day. No. Yeah. I mean. It scares me. <laughs> 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 yeah, it does. That and the food, Jesus. It's a. Uh, okay, it's talking of food, how many calories do you reckon are in the average Christmas dinner? The actual plate of food that you would eat. Uh, what, time, what time do you eat your Christmas dinner, guys? Oh, it varies. Lunch, like half one, 2 yeah. p.m. You don't oh, have to yeah. wait for the Queen's speech at three. No, I'm no. normally on a You were asleep on the <laughs> yeah. yeah. coma. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it varies depending on whether we go to, to Steph's or to mine, but in the afternoon sometimes. It, or yeah. do you, are, you the, are you some of these people who have more than one Christmas dinner on I've Christmas Day? I've done that. I've had two, and that's, that's tough because then when you go around to the next relatives, they make you this lovely... Christmas dinner and you feel obliged to eat it because you've put all this effort into it and you're just like, I can't eat anymore. I'm just forcing it down. But calories. Calories in your average plate of Christmas dinner. So like turkey, you've got the trimmings, you've got your potatoes, 2, your veg. 2,870. Oh, good guess. Mm. Mr. Terry Anderson. I'm, I'm, I've heard a figure go around that you, you consume something like 6,000 in the day. Yeah. So I'm going to go 2,300. The average Christmas dinner apparently is between three and four thousand calories. <laughs> I think that might have included dessert, something maybe like Christmas yeah. pudding, maybe a bit of a, a starter. And I've I'm got, not. I'm not surprised. You might have like 
the amount of food that's normally on that plate well, and, they, and they, the fat and yeah, the way it's Yeah, they reckon it's come from a lot of, like the fat from the meat and then mm. you'll put that in the gravy. You put goose fat on your potatoes, you know, yeah. Christmas if you're posh. <laughs> 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 so yeah, it all, it all adds up, right? There's one thing that happens as well around this time of year. Um, a lot of newspapers, news article websites will put up this same story because it's great for clickbait, it's great for shares, and that is the calories you will need to burn and the exercises you will need to do to burn off your Christmas dinner. Can I have your thoughts on that? It's ridic- it is ridic- ridiculous. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous, though, is because so they're looking at the calories burnt just from exercise, and that's only a small percentage of, of how we burn calories. And if you don't exercise at all, how are you going to burn through that those calories? You know, so your body, we spoke about it before, haven't it? Your body burns calories through four different ways, which known as your metabolism or your total daily energy expenditure, which is your basal metabolic rate, which is calories burnt at rest, your non-exercise activity, uh, also known as your NEAT, which is like your fidgeting, your typing, your unplanned movement, your unconscious movement, um, the thermic effect of food, which is out of that 3,000 calorie Christmas dinner, about 300 calories are spent on digestion that's why you feel like you want to have a nap when you eat that much food <laughs> and you like, can't you don't miss you don't watch the queen's speech you don't yeah because yeah and that's that's your body working spending energy on digestion and then you've got the last one which is what the newspaper is talking about which is the exercise activity thermogenesis which i think that is a it really it's a negative way to look at food when you look oh if i eat this much food i've got to do, do this much exercise i think it, uh, it, it's a negative association to to, to match the two together I did I didn't know whether to give an example of this because I didn't want to I didn't want to kind of contribute to it. Yeah. So I'm going to give an example but I'm going to preframe it and say this is not something we advise and we actually mm. think this is awful. So apparently the most calorific festive food item is Christmas pudding at 305 calories per serving. To burn this off, apparently you would have to do 1445 squats <laughs> or 460 burpees. 578 lunges, 29 one minute planks, or jog for 29 minutes. That seems, that. see, that seems excessive for, yeah, even for 300 calories. I mean, again, you know, they're probably going like, oh, is this like an average man or an average sized woman? Probably marketing it more at women, you know, because it's gonna, people are gonna burn 300 calories at a different rate. If you're taller, heavier, and more muscular, you're gonna burn calories faster. But still, like, your body will just burn more than 300 calories in a day anyway. You don't need to look at it as a, through exercise to burn it, do you? No. It, it's, it's just such a bad way of looking at it because it, they make it, when, when they put it in the, in the media, they make it so unachievable that it's that it's not even like a, a question. We, we don't want people to look at exercise like that anyway in the first place. But when it's such a big one, it, it almost like turns people off to, so what's the point of exercise altogether? I mean, yeah. do, you know, do you know what I mean? Like you're going into the into a period of time where, you know, straight after Christmas, you get like your New Year's goals and everything. Mm-hmm. They're already like pre-programmed to be like, everything you do is not going to match your, you know, celebration you had the other day. And, yeah. and it's just like such a bad way of looking at calories in versus calories out or mm-hmm. how you can maintain a healthy body. It's, it's just bonkers. Yeah. Well, talking talking of that and Christmas Day, um, some some p- schools of thought will be it's one day enjoy yourself eat what you want, mm-hmm. but that also it doesn't work for everyone, does it? Definitely, definitely not. I mean, I think you've got to do what you want to do and not feel peer pressured, which is often what happens when you're around loads of family and friends. Is oh, I feel like I have to get involved, or I feel pressured to eat this food, um, and you know, for a lot of people that might be. A little bit triggering or just not what they want to do or in align with their values and i think it's obviously you want to spend you know christmas is definitely around about seeing people and visiting people and like celebrating but um that doesn't always have to mean just overindulging in food and alcohol like you can say no in those in those times especially if it's going to make you feel better and feel better the next day so it's tough it's definitely we you know we were speaking about this on the way down it's definitely tough to navigate just because of all those uh, external pressures that happen how you said there about you can say no. Mm-hmm. Like I, I find this this time of year really hard. So we are recording this podcast at the end of November and the Christmas food is already in the shops, right? 
But the best before end date on that food isn't the 26th of December. The best before end date is next week or the week after. And it's like we are marketed to all these amazing things that we've got to eat. You know, you must try these mince pies and these pigs in blankets now. And it's it's become like Christmas dinner isn't just that one day it's it's like it happens from the moment halloween finishes <laughs> you start seeing all the christmas stuff in the shops and you feel like uh, there's that mentality of fuck it it's christmas yeah. and I, i'm just gonna do it and you know you were talking there about saying no actually we're not saying no on one day you, you're saying no for six weeks yeah how do you how do you make that easier i just got a quick one yeah do the americans know what pigs and blankets are oh i don't know Pigs. Okay. Pigs in blankets are very small cocktail sausages with bacon wrapped around them. <laughs> so, yeah. We'll yeah. flash up a picture on the screen of them. No, so, yeah. I mean, you're right. You are. You're not just saying no for, you know, for, for that one day or for those couple of days or even that week in between Christmas. No. It is for the, for the six weeks before it, which, you know, does make it more challenging. I think marketers are definitely seeing this as an opportunity now to start Christmas earlier, start Christmas earlier, uh, market these foods because, you know, what are you going to see on off the back of a, a Christmas food or item? It's normally going to be 150% more in terms of cost. So there's more profit incentive, incentivized uh, for them to market that to you. So yeah, it, it, it is difficult. It doesn't mean that you can't eat those foods. You can, but again, it's just got to be in aligned with do you actually want to eat them or are you just eating them for the sake of it because it's Christmas? You know, does that match your goals, your intrinsic values, your extrinsic values? Apparently, apparently in America, pigs in blankets means hot dogs in croissant dough. Oh, hot. they, they go. So pigs in blankets in America means hot dogs in croissant dough. Well, that, that definitely would go on the plate. I don't know, that yeah. sounds nice. I quite oh, yeah. like the idea of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you find this, Terry, with clients, body smart clients in particular, like this this time of year, this six week period? Because for our American clients, well, for our Canadian clients, their Thanksgiving is in October. I don't think they go as much to town as our American friends, though, do they? And then for our American clients, it you know, Thanksgiving starts from that third week in November. It's, it's all about excess. Is this a really tough time for people in general to navigate? Yeah, I think it's like, you know, I, I, like what Joe was saying earlier about it aligning with the values and stuff. You'll get a small bunch of clients who, you know, they're so tied to their goals and they're so diligent that they're like, I'm not going to let this time ruin it. But for the majority, it's it's hard to lose weight in any way. And mm. you'll get most of your, your clients are what we work with every single day is how do we navigate this situation? What's going to happen this weekend? And and it's that times 10,000, you know, because you're not only just going out into the street with your friend to have that social thing. You're, you're walking past every window, which is saying, have this like gingerbread latte with cream and, and, <laughs> and, a, and a biscuit and like, yeah. you know, have this here and, and everything. You go walk past the, the nice like mulled wine, like Christmas thing and everything's tent in you so it's it's like it's hard enough anyway but when businesses like i think it's like costa make something like 30 percent of their annual profit in like the nine weeks around christmas <gasps> and it's because like they'll probably just extend it out and extend it out because it's like those christmas drinks and the way they market it but they're not christmas drinks they're chris that's a dessert and a cup yeah you know what I mean? Like some of those drinks are like 500 calories in a cup and it's just and like more. fat and cream and loads of sugar. Yeah. Like that's not a coffee. <laughs> and it is, <laughs> like they're, they're marketed anymore, in the pretty it? cups and Starbucks do this, don't mm. they? You know, they have their red cups for Christmas and Costa in the UK. The cups have got snowmen on or gingerbread men mm, yeah. and, it's, and it's pictured in a way of a beautiful snow scene and it, it's all about indulgence mm -hmm. and treating yourself. Mm -hmm. It's, and I just find it, it's really hard. I am struggling with that at this moment in time. I went shopping yesterday and that, that's why I asked the question. And all, you know, the end dials when you go shopping, of course, they put yeah. all the tempting stuff on the end dials. Yeah. And they're all decorated in a way where it looks beautiful and that traditional, amazing <laughs> Lapland Christmas yeah. scene of snow and, and everything's in beautiful packaging and everything's on offer. And I, I found the whole experience of being in the supermarket yesterday just extremely stressful. Mm -hmm. um, and I made sure that I went in with a list so I didn't deviate yeah. from the plan. I'd eaten, so I wasn't going in hungry. And I also do this thing where I don't know if anybody else does this. I set myself a time limit. That's good. They're, like, the they're really good tips though. Yeah. Like if you ever go shopping hungry, 
that is like a recipe for disaster, isn't mm. it? You're just like, I want to eat all the food when mm -hmm. you go to the shops hungry. And then having a list, yeah, you know, it's not going to allow you to, to deviate too much from, from what you need. So, yeah. I've, I've taken it one step further in the past as well. And I've gone in with cash. So I've got the list. I know yeah. roughly how much it's going to cost me. And I've gone in with cash and left the cards at home to force me to not buy licorice all sorts <laughs> and, yeah. and all the tasty things, things that I want. Yeah. And, and it is, it is, it is difficult to, to navigate. And that's what I mean. It's, it's not just, we talk a lot of the time about Christmas or Thanksgiving, just being one day and how to navigate the one day. You're not, you're navigating six or seven weeks. You're also navigating the season. It is winter. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's like, like days are short now. It goes light at eight o'clock. It's dark at three thirty. You've got very short days and you do have feel like you want to hide beneath a little bit, don't you? Mm. You don't like want to get up as early and you want to go to bed a bit earlier. And it's, you know, that, what is it? Is it class Seasonal sad? affective disorder. Yeah. yeah. Sad. Yeah. So do you, do you take like vitamin D at this time of year? Does was, that? Uh, we were talking yeah. about this today because I, my like, I used, I'm, I'm definitely like a night owl normally. Like I'm more, more awake in the evening, but. I've changed my routine to make sure it doesn't affect my day like in the last couple of months. Um, I always want to make sure I walk my dog and I always want to get my workout in and just feel like I've moved. So in the mornings, I'm like 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., walk my dog, 7 a.m., get into the gym, get that done. And what I found is like as it's got darker, my walk used to wake me up for the gym and then I'd go into the gym like ready to go. And I've been going into the gym like more and more tired, like half asleep because I'm, and it's because, and I swear it's just literally because it's darker and I don't get that like sunlight. Mm -hmm. So I've started like taking vitamin D and I'm kind of yet to see how it's like positively affected me, but I'm sure that there's something in it um, and it, it will help me out. I've definitely felt a bit better this week. I don't know if that's because I haven't been walking my dog. I've been up in the pool, so <laughs> maybe I'm just like getting yeah. a bit more sleep, but yeah, like it's, it's it's definitely a thing. It is yeah. definitely a fiction. Have either of you ever used a SAD lamp at all? No, the, no I, don't, I've, I've, I think I think Simon just got one of them when he said about the lux lights in there. I think they're meant to be a, you know really effective. Um, so but, I, I've got a Lumi clock. Okay. I say I've got a Lumi clock. It's currently not plugged in because my husband cannot stand any form of light. <laughs> so unfortunately, I don't use it as often as he used to, but I definitely felt the benefit of it. So it, it's got like a big dome on the top and it mimics a sunrise and a sunset for when you go to bed and when you get up. So you can program it to for the sun to rise over a 90 minute period and then eventually it's bright. And the idea is that if you're lying next to it, it fills your eyes yep. with what yep. is as close to natural light as possible. And it, it helps wake you up. It also does the same at nighttime. You can choose for it to go down to help your body prepare mm -hmm. for sleep as well. And I have to say, when I was using it, I definitely felt the benefit of that in the winter. Yep. And it is marketed as, yep. as like an SAD lamp for those people who struggle with seasonal yep. affective disorder. I think, I think most people even, um, should take vitamin D. I mean, you can always consult with your doctor and you can get some blood work done. But most people, I think it's like 60, 70% of people are vitamin D deficient. It's really, really high. Um, and that's had some negative effects for people with COVID as well. If they've been vitamin D deficient, I think a high percentage of people that were hospitalized had, um, you know, suboptimal uh, ranges of vitamin D. So yeah, taking vitamin D, really important. And then even more important in the winter. Yeah. Do you think as well, um, with the Christmas party season being like we talked about in the UK, sometimes depending on where that Mad Friday, Crazy Friday falls, <laughs> it can be like a 10 day period. Our routines are so disrupted at that time. We're going to bed, like you were saying, Terry, you know, it's the early hours of the morning a lot of the time yeah. when the Christmas party's <laughs> finished. And then maybe because we're off work, we're sleeping in, we're having chocolate for breakfast, Christmas film marathon. Yeah. Yeah. That's That's not good for us, is it? It depends. Oh, I think, uh, <laughs> gonna miss you on the fence. Yeah. We'll call you Ron Seal Being sitting on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does depend, doesn't it? Like some people want to do that. You know, that's like their choice. They don't mind gaining some weight and, you know, being a little bit less active and watching more Christmas films and doing all that type of stuff and drinking more. Um, and that and that's fine. That, that is ultimately always your choice and you will go through seasons probably where you gain and lose weight. But for other people, especially if you're on like a weight loss journey or a fat loss journey, I think it's a it, it can be a, a terrible time that can set you months back in terms of your progress. And um, it is so much harder to, to restart than it is to start again. So if someone were to sign up for coaching with us and they were to get going and 
start their journey. You know, you've got that initial motivation. You're like, I'm going to do all the things. I'm going to get set up. I'm going to start taking action. You can start building up progress. Uh, you know, you could be losing like a lot of weight. You could feel like you're getting stronger. You're being really consistent. And then if something like Christmas happens and you you go from like lots of routine and structure and habits to, to nothing, you know, the weight can quickly come pile back on. Um, you know, you've maybe stopped tracking your food. You maybe stopped drinking your water, stopped moving your body on a, on a regular basis. And then when it comes back to that like D-Day, maybe if that's like, you know, the first Monday after in January, it's so much harder to do all those things. Mm. Uh, whether it's like tracking your food again, you know, you're going to jump on the scales. You might have seen that you've just gained all the weight back that you've lost over a two month period. You know, oh. you've, you know what I mean? You feel like you feel out of breath walking up the stairs. You feel not as fit. You know, getting up early feels difficult. And it's, you know, at that point, like motivation is much lower now than when you first started. So even though you're restarting to get things going again, motivation is a lot lower and it feels a lot harder and it feels like a slog. And it can often, I've seen, take people till March to get <gasps> back to where they were from a 10 day to 14 day period around Christmas where they just sort of let let loose. And 99% of the time when I've spoke to those clients, they've said, I wish I'd have created more structure or wish I'd, wish I'd have been more mindful around Christmas and not let it get away from me because, you know, was that 10 day period where I was hyper-focused on my goals, was that, or not focused on my goals, was that worth three months of struggling to get back to where I, I was before? How you talk there then about like being more mindful and being hyper focused like what what's the middle ground then for you guys like what would you advise somebody who maybe i'll use myself as an example so my okay. my december yeah, let's use, right. let's use you, so, yeah. okay let, let's not last december so years ago mm -hmm. for, and this would happen for years and years and years right i would be on a health kick like september october november yeah without fail i'd have lost weight Mm -hmm. And I've looked back because I've done this recently. I've looked back on my fitness plan. It's like, whoa, my lowest weight of the year is always around the beginning of end of November, beginning of December. And I was like, oh, yeah, because I tend to I've done some form of like mm -hmm. weight loss specific yeah. challenge. It gets to December and my brain used to go, fuck it, it's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and I would eat all the things and I yeah. would drink all of the drinks. And then I would put on between 14 and 21 pounds over that December. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. a shitload of weight to put on. And then I would start in January. How did you feel in January? A fucking awful. Yeah. Like how like how bad though? Like, oh do you know what? Mentally more than anything, yeah. it was more of a here we go again. It's it's physical weight and mental weight. It, yeah. And do you know yeah. that yeah. mental weight, that that shame. I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna go deep on this. It's that looking in the mirror going what is wrong with you? Why mm. can't you get this? You have done this every single year. Like the booze, the Baileys wasn't worth it. The wine wasn't worth it. Eating, and I have, I've done this, you know, I, I've done this where I've eaten a full Christmas dinner and then I've had more and then everybody's gone to bed mm. and I've eaten more. I've eaten selection box chocolate out of my kids, mm. Christmas present stuff before Christmas as well. Mm. Like I have eaten food that was that was meant for relatives and children and sat there eating it at night and hidden the wrappers and it's horrible it's a horrible horrible feeling of what the hell is wrong with me and it was only working with a coach where i was able to uncover those triggers why yeah. i turned to food in the first place those different stresses that were causing me to reach for food in the first place so i, I am looking forward to this december mm. because this will be my first christmas since i've been coached yeah. where i feel like i have taken a semester in myself as our <laughs> lovely breakthrough coach erin <laughs> says you know I've, I've done this whole year of of learning about myself and what makes my stupid brain <laughs> do these yeah. things and think so, this so way. When, you, when you're looking at that Christmas period in the past, yeah. you know, if we were to try and plan that out to be more mindful, like we were saying, yeah. what, you know, I, I think a question I would ask is like, you know, like how many days are at like, you know, you visiting friends and family and how many days are like around, are centered around food or drink? Most of them. In, you, the, in the whole I, month? Um... No, not in the whole month. But there is, there's always like this, this, oh, the girls will meet up. So I'm, I'm really blessed. I've got lots of different groups of friends and it'll be like, oh, there's, there's a, you know, there's a work night out, for example, tomorrow or my, my girl mates are doing this. Me and my mate Claire will do 
Mm -hmm. Me and Kate and Lisa will meet, you know, there's different pockets of friends. Me and my sisters will have a night out. So sometimes in the past, there have been times where looking at my social calendar, there's maybe two or three, four things a week, every week in December. Because you know what it's like as well, trying to plan Christmas parties and things. They get booked up months in advance, you know, so they end up creeping in earlier and earlier and they start in the November. Well, it's ours, isn't it? Yeah. Ours. <laughs> yeah. ours is tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so there, there's many things to navigate. Mm-hmm. I don't think there will be as much this year because the one thing that COVID has got me to do is say no to things that yeah. I don't want to do. And mm-hmm. actually, I don't want my life to revolve around food as much. And this year already, I have been making alternative arrangements. So I met up with somebody last week, for example. We'd originally planned to do a little pre-Christmas meal type gathering and instead we changed it to a walk and a talk. Yeah. yeah. And it was brilliant. Miles better. Yeah. No, Miles definitely. Better. And I think that's, I mean, that's, you know, having three or four things a week on for every week in December is a lot. Yeah. But I think it's, you know, ultimately if you're, you know, uh, one of my coaches uh, one of my old business coaches said something to me a while back and it really, really stuck is, is like, you can have it all. You just can't have it all at once. And I think that's the important distinction. Oh, that say you- it again. <laughs> say it again. Let me, let me just burn this into the back of my retinas, <laughs> into my brain. You, you can have it all. You just often can't have it all at once. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for me, I was looking at a lot of different things in terms of how I was spending my time back then. But I think for a lot of people who are trying to lose weight and lose weight, you know, weight and fat for the final time, you know, when you're coming into a period like Christmas, it's like, hey, you know, you can still go and visit all these friends, but you might have to eat a certain way or you might have to say no to drinking and you might have to be more selective with your choices. But guess what? You probably won't need to do that next year because you will will be at your goal and losing weight and a, and a fat loss phase is not forever. So, you know, you going through a period of where you're still hyper-focused on your goals, you still go and visit people and see people, you know, maybe you're, say there's 10, you know, evenings out or days, maybe you choose one or two where you really want to, you know, one or two or three where you go, right, I'm going to indulge a little bit more on these days and set those, you know, sort of clear boundaries. Mm. But you can still, like Christmas is about seeing people and about spending time with people. It's not about stuff in your face till you can't move. I know some some people might feel like it is like that. And, And you know what? Maybe you can do that again when you've got a little bit more freedom and flexibility with your calories and your nutrition and you're not in a fat loss phase. But if you're trying to lose weight over the Christmas period, um, as we said, it's much harder to restart than it is to start the first time over. And for a lot of people, you know, we've we've seen this time and time again, th- this this can be a, a, a difficult time to navigate. But mm-hmm. if you do navigate it well, you're going to go into the new year, you're going to go into January, and you're going to feel like you're 10 steps ahead of everyone else. You're going hit to the, hit the new year with momentum. And by the time you get around to the Christmas the year after, you're not going to be dieting anymore. You know, you're probably, you're probably not going to be in a fat loss phase. You'll have more calories and then you can indulge and say yes to a little bit more. So I think it's just always important to understand that, you know, we say, oh, there's no restriction. You can eat what you want. A calorie deficit in a fat loss phase, that, that is a level of restriction. Yeah. And, and you do still have to navigate and manage that if you still want to keep seeing progress over the holidays. I'll, t- I'll talk to my, my clients that like about selecting the, like say like four a week every week is pretty intense but um <laughs> most most people there there's only like a few a few real true days where they're like okay this is what i need to do and i always say it's the two difficult so if you're on a fat loss phase in december it's difficult mm-hmm. like there's no yeah. two ways about it but you've got your difficult difficult and your difficult easy and picking and choosing the difficult difficult which is that's that's the one that i really want to drink that's the one that really means the most to me and the difficult easy is I'd really like that, but I probably could have a conversation or or go for a walk instead because it's a little bit easier because it doesn't mean quite as much to me as going out on Christmas Eve with all my friends and family. That's mm. the one where I do want to let loose. Don't really want to track my calories or whatever it is. But the difficult easies are, yeah, okay, I probably could make a bit more choices here. I probably could be a bit more sensible in the, mm. in the day before. And, and it's going to be difficult still. There's still going to be temptation around. There's still going to be all of the other stuff that, draws you in but it's a bit easier than those other ones and if you can choose just one or two or three difficult difficult days you're probably going to be all right yeah i've heard i've heard them also labeled as like a b c days so like an a day is i think what you're saying there like that's where i'm gonna yeah. the, the you know i'm not tracking i'm not i'm gonna drink i'm gonna enjoy myself a b is something like oh it's my husband's christmas do you know these aren't yeah. my friends so actually i'll drive 
so I'm not drinking yeah. and I'll, I'll enjoy the food. And then a C might be, right, no, I'm going to track everything. I'm going to be within my calorie goals. I'm going to make sure I train that day. I'm going to hit my protein and all mm, that. Yeah. And then labeling your days, your days that way. I, th I think you still have to, you still have to look at that with a level of caution though, because you know, for some people, like we might be talking now, those that a day or difficult, difficult days, yeah, yeah. Mm. you know, you still don't want that to be like, oh, cause this is the one day yeah, I've yeah. got or the two days I've got. <laughs> I am literally going through town, three desserts, you yeah. know, two bottles of Bailey's, 13 pints, as we said before, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Wow. Just go, like, you're just going like hell for leather because like that's become a, a, a free day. Like you can still go and have that day and have a good time and eat lots of good food and be mindful. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I, if you do do that, like you're saying, you the the rails yeah. are off. It's so hard the day after. Oh, you're it's not, so hard. You're not yeah. the day after going to be all of a sudden like, oh, here we go, right, yeah. back to my <laughs> wonderful routine and tracking yeah. and going yeah. to the gym. You're not. It's yeah. just too hard. Definitely, yeah. definitely. So you have, you've got it, and that's. I think that's what makes it a like we've spoke about this many times. It's it's decision fatigue for a lot of people. Mm. Like how do how do I go into December and navigate this well as 10 nights out I've got or 10 days out, you know, am I giving myself permission on that day? Am I not? What does that mean? How do I be mindful? Yeah. So I think the more you can, you know, just look at the, the month ahead, you know, choose the days you want to have a little bit more, um, you know, freedom with maybe your, your nutrition or your drinks and whatever else. And maybe just setting some, some clear boundaries of what you would like to do. Like what would be important to you? Do you want to, Eat till you're stuffed. No. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. No. But, but, I don't want to do that but anymore. Ter but ter <laughs> but Terry, Terry might. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. so, you know, Terry, but, you know, and, and, I, and I might not, I might not want to do either, you know, so just setting those boundaries, like what, what, what do you want? Like, what does Jamie want? What does Shemma want? What does Terry want? And then taking those decisions away before the day comes. And then when it comes, you, you're going into the day with more intention. Doesn't mean like Terry said, there's not going to be difficulty around navigating it and temp temptation. But if you can go into that and then stick to what you've set out, you know, you are going to get up the next day and hopefully feel a lot better and be able to keep keep striving forward. I think that's where co like coaching is so valuable this time of year, that having having someone there to help you with that decision and like mm -hmm. work through these with you. Because you get like that element of decision fatigue just thinking about the decisions you got to make. <laughs> like it's like, that's so true. Yeah. So having someone there that can say, okay, what's coming up this week? You know, what is what is going to happen? How can we plan for this? Um, and having that person there to help you through that and, and then come to the decision that you really want um, just helps a ton. Mm -hmm. I've, I have made one decision actually, and this, this came from, coaching so I've I've recently I've got a new coach now I've got Gav and um I was away this weekend and on the the first evening because it was habitual and situational there were bowls of popcorn and Pringles on the table we were playing card mm -hmm. games big family card loads of fun but because it was in front of me the popcorn and the Pringles I I ate them that that is and, that is hard though and you know what the worst thing is about food being left on a table in bowls it's often got like well more in than you realize. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's flipping Pringles famous line, isn't it? Yeah, once you pop, you, pop you once you pop, you can't <laughs> stop. And I, it is, it's like, it's just something about food being on a table and just like picking at it. And you just unconsciously, mindlessly there's, eat. There's, there's a book called Mindless Eating by Brian Wansink and they've done study and he says about this study in there and it's this soup bowl. Mm. They created this restaurant. <gasps> and I've seen this, yeah. They just keep filling the bowls up from under the table. Like there's like a, a tube going into the bowls and yeah. people just keep eating and they just keep eating because the bowl is not empty. <laughs> and the amount of people, like the percentage of people that overate in that restaurant was was huge. Mm. It was it was like nearly every single person over ate what they normally would, the normal amount of soup that would be like given to them because it just wasn't going down. And, and when you've got those like, those never ending like huge bowls and yeah. then someone comes out and fills it up again and yeah. you just keep going. And it's weird, isn't it? Because they feel like they're just being a good host and you're just like, oh my God, stop me from eating. <laughs> well, I, I did, yeah. I had to have that moment. So I'm really lucky. I was away with my sister. My sister's also being coached. So that's really helpful because the two of us don't just each have a coach, but we talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So she said to me at the end of the night, are you all right? And I was like, no, I'm really annoyed with myself because I've eaten loads that I, I didn't intend to eat. And she said, have you messaged Gav? I was like, no, I'm going to do it in a minute. So I did. And I was like, look, this is what I've done. I don't want to do it tomorrow. So he was like, right, what are you, what are you going to do? And 
I said, right, I'm going to talk to my sister. I'm going to talk to my mum and everybody who's hosting and say, I don't want to eat that tomorrow. And also, if the bowls do get put in front of me, I'm going to immediately move them out of reach of me. And even just having that conscious thought of, I am not going to do this tomorrow. It's like, I suppose it's setting an intention, isn't mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. It just made it so much easier the next day because I wasn't doing it, like you said, mindlessly. Because yeah. that's the problem when you're doing something because it's there, it's environmental. So so one of the things I want to do over the Christmas period is I have got some lovely bowls that go in the centre <laughs> of my island in the kitchen and usually they would be filled with sweets, chocolate, treats, that's not happening this year. They're staying in the cupboard. <laughs> it's not happening because if they're out, if they're out, I'm just going to pick at it, and I yeah. don't want to do it. There's tons of things with like tablescape where you can curate. Like this Christmas, you can literally curate like a, a an unconscious way of eating and drinking less. So like drinking from tall glasses, you'll always drink a l- uh, less drink from tall glasses mm-hmm. because you think it's bigger. Um, so when you've got a short fat glass. Um, compared to a long tall one, you people with tall glasses drink less than in the shorter, fatter glasses. So you use your tallest glasses. And buy some measures. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> and buy yeah, some yeah, measures. Because yeah. so, otherwise you're just pouring that tall glass up. But no, yeah, definitely. Smaller plates. Yeah. yeah. Um, then there's like, don't keep all of the, like I know it's like some of the tradition, keep the big turkey on the table and stuff. If you prepare the plates in the kitchen and then bring the plates to the table, you have to keep going back out to get more for your plate. It's another barrier there. And also leaving things like leaving scraps of food in your eyesight. Um, most people will get full quicker because they can see. Like another study that was done was like with chicken wings in a restaurant, like bottomless wings. Mm-hmm. And when when they had to leave the bones on the table, they eat less <gasps> than when the bones are taken away. Right. Because your eyes are telling you, I've eaten a lot of chicken, like mm-hmm. there's a lot of bones on the table. So just things like serve in the kitchen, eat at the table, tall glasses, small plates, um, leave the scraps and the unfinished food about so you can see you're done. All of this stuff is not you even trying or anyone else trying. You will naturally just do, like you'll be a bit, a little bit better, that 1% better. You know? So little things you can do to yeah. set you up for success without even if feeling like you're yeah. like consciously eating less, you you still feel like you're enjoying the moment and the time, yeah. but you're eating and drinking a little bit less yeah. just by the, the decisions you've made prior to that. Yeah, and it's, yeah. Ju- it's just proven time and again through the science. Like it, you can't like, it's just our, our psychology. We, mm-hmm. You will naturally eat less um, or drink less, whatever it might be. And and so setting your environment up is huge. I'm going to do it's, it's Christmas Day at my sister's who's also being coached. So yeah. that's a brilliant tip there because I, I can see it now. Normally what she does, because she's like the most incredible cook and host, it's all it's serve yourself at the table. Yeah. And I'm a fat greedy pig sometimes. <laughs> I, will, I will just go yeah. in for the kill. If she's making cauliflower cheese or Brussels sprouts and bacon, whoa, I'm in. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> the, she'll always do like a gammon and it's on the table, you're right. Whereas if we were to plate that up in the kitchen and you, I have to physically go back, I know I wouldn't eat as much. Yeah. So yeah. thanks for that. That's going to be well, you, you might, an And awesome people tip. might go up once. But you would, most people probably wouldn't keep going up unless you just really don't care. You know mm. what I mean? Cause, it, yeah, it's yeah. easier to just go off the table than it is to keep like being that person that goes back in the kitchen and comes back with <laughs> a, another plate of food. Yeah. I'll tell you what else I found helpful. You know, with leftovers, I, I found that using foil to wrap them up rather than cling film has helped me. Because you can't visually can't see, see it. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I can't see it. I've got these, um, have, you ever, have you seen this beeswax mm. recyclable cl- food wrap? cling film that you can get in my bid to try and save the environment and the turtles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bought some of this and it's it's got like a pattern on it so you can't see. Right. So that's been mm. that's been quite good for not being able and I've done things like um desserts and cakes. Yeah. I wrap it in that reusable beeswax stuff so I just can't see it. So yeah, I'm not yeah. thinking every time I open the fridge and I'm maybe going for something healthy and it's like, oh there's cake there. I can see it. I'm just gonna lift yeah. the cling film and eat do, it. Do you think all some people that listening to this might be like, this all sounds really obsessive and extreme and you know why can't you just enjoy like i'm just trying to think of like you know what my mum might say or you know like you know what your grandparents might say like why have you got to take all these steps like don't you think it's just a bit extreme it's just christmas it's just a couple of you know it's just a week or whatever else can't you let your hair down these are like standard things people say don't they um you know i think that does come up a lot as we've said like a lot of people do gain a lot of weight in it 
completely can derail people's fat loss journeys. But, you know... I, I can't wait to get to January this year and not feel that level of annoyance at myself and shame mm -hmm. and frustration. Yeah. And somebody listening might think, oh, that sounds a bit extreme. Somebody listening might think, oh, do you, why do you have to feel like that about yourself? Can't you just be body positive and all that? And we've talked about this before. I've tried that. Yeah. No, <laughs> the best the best way I feel great in myself is when I keep my promises to myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that When I let myself down, that's when... I find myself getting frustrated. And I have had friends who said, oh, can't you just cut, just cut yourself some slack? You're so hard on yourself. I am right now because I'm in this fat loss phase, but it's a phase, it's not forever. And I want to get to that point by hopefully next mm. Christmas where, like you just said, that sounds like an amazing, holy grail, magical unicorn place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, where you're not, I'm not worrying. Um, but for now for somebody like me, and I know there are a lot of people out there like me, I have to keep my eyes on the prize this Christmas because like you said, Jamie, otherwise I'm going to still be working on this till March and I don't want to be. Yeah, and and the rest, you know what I mean? Because yeah. like that's just often getting back to where you were prior to Christmas. Yeah. So there is, I think, I think a big tip as well would just be to keep, if you are worried, worried about your weight or worried about gaining weight over Christmas, you know, people who successfully lose weight and keep it off, one of the traits that they have is they continue to self-monitor in some way. So, <clears throat> you know, for me, probably a way I self-monitor is just a mirror. You know, I can tell if I start gaining fat, I see it on my midsection, you know, pretty much like right away. And that's kind of a cue for me. Being eating a little bit like a pig, Jay, you know. <laughs> yeah, better dial back your calories a little bit, you know, and, and I can kind of see that visually. For some people, it's not as obvious and that might be jumping on the scales a little bit more you know, frequently than maybe you're used to or you wouldn't normally do over Christmas. But having a level of self-monitoring -monitor over, you know, the, the the holidays and over Christmas, I think is a good way to keep your, to not get too like disassociated with like the, the direction that things are going and to maybe let it get away from you. And, you know, I think like you said, a big part of of feeling good is keeping your promises to yourself. Yeah, but I definitely. think that I think that comes from what we said a bit earlier about setting intentions mm. and then following through with them. You know, this is the intention. This is what I've chosen to. This is what I want to do and what I want to honor. For me to, to keep my promises, I'm now going to follow through with that. And you do, you know, I've had it where I've been out with friends and decided not to drink. And then, you know, they kind of peak and then they've stopped pestering me to drink as well. And then, but then you get up the next day and you know they're all hanging and I'm in the gym at seven o'clock. You've, and, only, mani I, you've yeah. only managed that once I've or managed twice. it a couple of times. Yeah. And, like I feel, and, I feel, and I feel so smug, so <laughs> smug the next day. I'll never forget. I went, you know, like I, I enjoy going out and having a drink as well. Yeah. And I went out sober one night. I had an amazing night. See? But because yeah. I was sober, there was this like competition going on to win a holiday at, to Ibiza. And, and it was about these tickets and these tickets were just, people were dropped them all over the floor. And I was like, everyone's smashed in it. I'm going to go and pick these tickets up. <laughs> I'm going to pick these tickets up. One holiday to Ibiza because, <laughs> because that was the one night I was like sober. And the next day I was like so smug. I was like, yeah, yeah I'll be the driver next time as well. <laughs> I love the fact that you used the word smug there because I, I call this getting smug points for smug myself. Points. So if I go and work out early in the morning, I'm like, oh, ha, 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 feeling smug for the day. I've yeah. done my early morning workout. And one thing we haven't covered is exercise. Mm -hmm. Now, Terry, you've owned a gym, ran a gym. Jamie, you've been a successful personal trainer. What's it like in gyms in December? Dead. It, it gets quiet. <laughs> it gets quiet. Yeah, it does get really quiet. It's even started to get quiet now, to be honest. Well, because yeah. mm -hmm. one of the things I wanted to talk about, you know, somebody listening might be thinking, oh, it's coming up to Christmas. I'm going to start my health and fitness goals in January, which is when it gets really busy. If you're going to join a gym as part of that health and fitness goal, which a lot of people do, it's manic in January in the gym, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Isn't this like a better time to start when it's a bit quieter, when you can navigate, <laughs> when you can get used yeah. to your gym and programming? I mean, definitely you've got you've got more access to the gym. You can get more familiar. There's less people in there often. Um, but I think the biggest part is just, like we're talking about getting, gaining some smug points. You know, by the time you get to January, if you started now, you're five weeks ahead of everyone else. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're five weeks ahead of... Uh, regular movement, regular exercise, uh, you know, you, you, the DOMS, which is uh, delayed onset muscle soreness, that only really lasts for like a couple of weeks. Like you shouldn't be continually getting uh, DOMS. So, you know, you're not aching. Can I just check on that? 
Like not from one, two, not a couple of weeks off one session. You mean like the first couple of weeks you'll get them after your sessions? The first, like f like the first like two to three weeks, you should probably get DOMS if you're new to training. If you're getting them and then if someone changes your training program, Right, okay. Okay, so if you change yeah. your training we'll program. You've done leg day with Jamie today. Yeah. I was going to say, you've done leg day with Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, if you change your, the movements and stuff, so you're not always sitting programs, but you shouldn't be, you know, and I think that puts people off sometimes, just how sore you can maybe feel. But after a couple of weeks, it, it does go. It your goes, body does, does adapt. So, yeah, you know, you're, you're miles ahead and you do. You're going to be that first week seeing everyone come in, probably gaining loads of weight, feeling sluggish, and you're, you're five weeks ahead of mm. everyone else. So lots of reasons to, to get in the gym this time of year. And what about as well movement in general? I know, you know, we talked there about a lot of the press being, oh, this is what the ex exercise you'll need to do to burn off this Christmas dinner or this alcohol. But actually, a, a lot of us, we do have a lot more time mm -hmm. if we're off, particularly around this time. And there is that tendency to think, oh, I'll just do, do nothing. But even getting out walking yeah. is great at this time of year. I think I think it's so good to to walk and stuff at Christmas, and I think there are things out there now which I know that like in the UK we have a thing called park run, and they always do a big Christmas Day park run. And oh, I didn't know you could do it on Christmas Day. Yeah, yeah so like know. it's like one of do the biggest in, days. Yeah, Sefton Park as well. So park run to explain is is like a free organized run, and mm. they normally take place first thing on a Saturday morning at hundreds of locations around the UK. But yeah, I didn't realize there was a Christmas day one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As well. So like, I think it just things like that, where that is more apparent now, like that, I don't remember, I, mean, I remember people used to, I had a few clients who would go on a run on Christmas day, but, but now it is like a, there's a lot more community things. Like there's literally hundreds of people in my local town that will turn up to this park run. And it's not because we are all trying to burn off our, our turkey. Mm. It's just, yeah. you know, they're consistently doing these park runs every week. I and mean, I was still want to do it on the Christmas mm -hmm. day, you know? I think I think the big issue with that calorie burn around exercise is it it makes out as if that's the only good thing exercise yeah. provides, which is burning calories. Mm. When we talk all the time about moving your body on a daily basis, it's just really beneficial for your physical health, your mental health, you know, your mood, uh, just burning off lots of extra mental energy and weight that we feel stress. like we carry around stress. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know, so it's um you know, when we just look at exercise as that one singular thing just just for burning calories it's almost like diminishes all the other really positive benefits when most of the time when we talk about exercise, it's, it's never got anything to do with a calorie burn. It's no. more got to do with just, oh, I feel great or I feel strong or I feel like I just hit like a new PB. It's 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 those other wins or, you know, it's great for my mental health or I feel de-stressed after it or it keeps me going. But I think the time you were just saying, and Jim, about the, the time off between Christmas, if you're going to work out, do it in the morning. <laughs> that's yeah. my, that's my yeah. number one tip. Yeah, yeah, because definitely. your friend is going to call you or your mum yeah. is going to say, come and see me. Just get up, get it done, and then just enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. And it's, it's done then. There's no room to procrastinate. If you're off, you will find a way to be distracted and procrastinate. So that would be my, my number one tip. If you've got a bit of time off over Christmas and you want to exercise, first thing, yeah, straight away. So anything else? Any other tips that we might not have covered? I think... One other, other question, uh, one other thing as well is that you go into these situations and, and I heard this from Eric, one of the other coaches, uh, it's it like a great way of looking at it. I'd not thought about this myself before. And a lot of the time you're always getting your family members saying, uh, you know, I'll get you another drink. Do you want another drink or do you want this food? And instead of saying no, because it just feels like you've got to go negative, like you're the person saying no, say yes, I'd love to spend some time with you and I'll have a Coke or I'll have a Diet Coke or a water. And what you'll do, what it does is it, it changes the way that they've they've heard that and they won't question you so much of, why are you saying no? And why don't you want the drink? Yeah. It's like, it's, yeah, I'll spend some time with you, which is what we both really yeah. want. Yeah. And I'll have a water. And and it just changes the dynamic yeah, of that's, it. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Like if you were to go to me, I'm like, oh yeah, Terry, I'd love a water. If you, would you mind getting me one? Yeah. It's different than me. I'm like, no, I'm okay. Yeah. It is, yeah. 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 So instead like of saying lot. instead of saying no, say yes and yeah. So how could you do that with food? So let's say, I don't know, uh somebody's offering me an another a mince pie or a piece of cake. Say and how would I how would I say it? I'd probably be like, you know what? I'd really love a cup of tea instead. Oh that's a good Even just even just that, <laughs> not using the words no, do you know what? I'd really love a. Mm -hmm. Do 
you know what? Have you got yeah. have you got any apples? I'd love an apple. <laughs> yeah, or even just like asking, like, do you want, do you want some yeah. more of the, the potatoes or anything? Like, yeah, I'll have a bit more of the veg over here. Or, like, mm. you know, yeah. you, you can so, just change the dynamic of the conversation immediately. And often people wouldn't yeah. even question that. Yeah. There's one thing I, I did want to bring up and I forgot to mention it is I know this is something that you get clients to do. And I've done this because I'm a stationary geek. Journaling is massive for me, mm -hmm. massive, massive, massive. And one of the things I've been doing is future self journaling, which I know you guys are huge advocates of. So this is where you say to yourself, like, what is the one thing you want to focus on right now? How can you work towards that today? And how the, your future self will feel having done that? And for the past couple of months, my future self journaling has been about exercise consistency. So it's like, how can I work towards that today? Oh, well, I'm not training today, but I could do a walk or, oh, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to do this program. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm going to use that same model, that future self journaling of how can I hyper focus on my goals? I think <laughs> I like that phrase, what you were saying, because throughout this next five, six week period, I do, I do want to keep my eyes on the prize. And I think writing that out, I like to, I call it thinking in ink. I like to think mm. in ink. That's good. And It does sink yeah. in a lot more. When you write stuff down, it 100% sinks in more. But I think it will feel like I'm setting a stronger intention every mm. day. And again, it comes back to that. I've written it out now. It's a promise to myself. I'm more likely to keep it if I've, if I've done it and I've written it out. And it's priming yourself. It keeps it top of mind. Like yeah. it's, you know, you do that, you do that in the morning and, you're you're priming yourself. You're keeping your your goals top of mind so that the decisions you make that day, you you've you've got your goals like top of mind at that point in time when you're making those decisions, um, and then you do that again. And you're not always going to make the best decisions, but then the next day you prime yourself again and you prime yourself again, and it just helps with with setting that intention. Amazing. Well, I think we shall wrap it up there because we've got a Christmas party to prepare for tomorrow. We have. <laughs> <laughs> but on yeah. behalf of the Body Smart team, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.